When you're building yourself a brand new PC, your spec sheet typically contains one of the top five things. CPU, motherboard, GPU, RAM, and case. Today, I bring you the brand new Fractal Design Pop Air Magenta Core RGB case. I'm super excited on this one. Something incredibly different I haven't seen in cases before and I'm bringing it to you here first. In this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing, an overview, and a build inside of this case. So let's get started. All right, so again, the Fractal Pop Air case, you can see here, it looks kind of basic just wait till we get inside so over here we go over some of the specifications and i'll talk to you about them when we're inside the case along the side here rgb magenta core tg clear tint then ean upc jan code serial number right up here and model number then over here along the back of the case just some more of the features and specifications and then they show you the case blown apart i love when they show this it looks so cool and then the other side basically nothing except fractal logo right over here and then coming along from the top just go ahead open it up now you can already see a little bit along the top here of why i think this is so cool All right, so before we get to the case itself, going over some of the external accessories included, they bring a filter inside of a bag, a little bit odd. Typically you would see it and actually it looks like it goes right over here. It is magnetic. Not sure why they didn't include it here, but that's okay. Then the usual user's guide that they include, which has basic information on how to build inside of this case and any other features and functions that they might want to show you that are not relatively obvious how to build in there and then the attention in case there's something wrong with it before you return the products contact the reseller or fractal just in case the usual stuff then they include another bag came with these the extended radiator bracket we won't be utilizing this so definitely some good information here just in case and then also some screws here in the bag. Correction on that. We will need to use it. Then there's the case itself. So first off, let me go ahead and remove all this stuff that makes it not look incredibly clear. That was nice. And the internal one. Okay, so the way that you remove That was nice too. All right, so you can see a lot more clear now. The magenta inside the case, it looks beautiful. Typically, the case is black or the case is white. We typically don't have an in-between. So while the outside is black on this case, you can see the accents are pink some accents along the top as well and i'll show you that a little bit later on but the inside is magenta not pink and it looks beautiful now they have a bunch of other colors as well but this one stood out to me they have orange core green core cyan core and magenta core like you see here white with rgb and white without rgb and black and black with rgb just in case you don't like smiling. <laughs> All right, so when removing the glare on here, I realized there is no handle to remove the side panel. Once you undo the two screws, you pull on the screws and the side panel comes loose and then you can just take it off. So tool is taking it off, so that's nice. And you can see here, it does have black borders along the side and then over here so that it can slide right into here and then lock into place. Now coming up a little bit closer so that we can see the inside of the case, the case supports ATX, MATX, mini ITX motherboards. Unfortunately, it does not do EATX boards, but that's okay. It comes with one, two, three, 120 millimeter Aspect 12 RGB fans. And it does support two more along the top. We can see right over here with the IO that it is going to be a very tight 
fit if you do have liquid cooling along the top. Okay, so back over here, we have two open holes. That way you can fit some cables for USB, front paddle audio, and all the different connections that would go along the bottom of the case. We also have an opening right over here for the top of the power supply. The fans are typically going to be along the bottom and we do have seven PCIe IOs right over here along with the little vents and also vents right over here where you could potentially have a vertically mounted GPU here. Unfortunately, it does not bring any kind of mounts to put in a vertically mounted GPU. So if you wanted to, you would have to mod the case. Coming up a little bit more, again, the rear IO. Back here, a huge spot for the rear of the motherboard. That way you can mount different types of liquid cooling units. Then right over here, a little opening along the side for some more cables, ATX24 pin as well. Everything would fit right through here. That's really nice the way that it is not only raised, but that the way they have it at an angle. So you can see it a little bit better there. And then as you see right over here, and I mentioned there are two front mounted 120 millimeter fans coming along the rear and the back of the unit. We can find where you can put the power supply along with a baggie full of accessories tied to these cables. So I'll get to that in one second. For the side, just go ahead, unscrew this over here, both of these thumb screws. And the same way we did on the other side, just pull out. This one has a handle though. You could pull out and then out like this. On the inside, there is no sort of sound dampening material here. It's just steel on steel, black of course. Oh, this is nice. So not only do we have the accents on the other side, but we have all the accents here. So then right over here, we can see the mounts for two SSDs. They did it a little bit different this time. Instead of being two separate mounts, it's one entire mount for two SSDs. So you would just screw them right in here and then just slide it back in. And then here we can see where you would slide in the cables that we saw on the other side. As usual, Fractal has chosen to slide the cables all the way along here. And then basically a spine here. And then with their Velcro ties right up here, they have the ARGB connections for all three fans running along here. And as we saw before, and actually it comes inside of a baggie with twist ties, the accessories box, and here are the accessories it brings in the baggie. About four different thin zip ties. Eight rubber washers to keep vibration from occurring if you're using mechanical drives in the cage. And then this is actually kind of nice. One. over here with four different screws. This would be for the power supply. These kind of screws. Another baggie with the screws for drives. So we'll see eight screws as well there. Then eight screws here for SSDs and mechanical 2.5 inch drives along the back panel. And then a bunch of screws for the motherboard. So the cable has connection for HD audio, then a connection for USB 3.0, a SATA power connection, and then a power switch. Now, unfortunately, it does not come with a USB type C connection. There is an opening for it, but it doesn't come with it. That's a optional upgrade kit available separately. And then along the bottom here, moving everything over, we can find the mount for two SSDs. Just unscrew that here. And thankfully, all of these thumb screws have come off very easily. The typical tray and then Fractal over here and over here. Along the front here, they have a Fractal tab that takes off the front panel 
And right over here, you can remove that. And then a little tray right over here. Now, I've never seen this before, but that tray is for accessories. So if you wanted to put the screws, everything that came with the case, I've never seen that before. That's kind of cool. Now, also, if you had optical drives, a CD or DVD drive, you can actually slide it in there as well. And this is the side rails where you would slide the opticals into, then screw them in, coming in from the front. Now, as usual, while there are fans already pre-installed, you are able to replace the front fans, the rear fans, add additional fans. You can change them for either different 120s or 140 millimeter fans. And for the top, you can fit radiators from 120 to 240 millimeters. And along the front, you can fit radiators from 280 240, 140, and 120 millimeters. Just make sure they're 145 millimeters or less in width. Then along the bottom of the case, we can see that they do include a filter for the power supply right along here. And that's the SSD or hard drive tray that I never secured back in there. The feet will give us almost an inch of space between the floor and the bottom of the case. The case is 18 inches long, 18 inches tall, and eight and a half inches wide. And coming along the top of the case, we can see here the power button, the RGB button to change the RGB lights, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter microphone jack, two USB 3.0 ports, and one USB type C connection. Now this is just the connection. The case itself does not actually bring the module to enable USB type C. You have to buy that separately, which kind of makes sense at the budget level this case is available. Now, again, you could buy that module separate. It would make it cost more if it came with it. This is a good option because some motherboards don't have a USB type C header. So this is perfect for those people. Then up here is where we saw the additional filter where I put it. Again, it is magnetic and to where I was saying before that we might run into issues putting liquid cooling over here. The radiator is moved towards the front side of the case or towards where the window is. So that gives us a little bit more room over here to have a liquid cooling unit hanging out. And we're going to be installing a 240 millimeter radiator right up here. I could have gone for a 280 up at the front, but I liked the look of having it along the top a little bit better. Then coming along the bottom of the case, again, here is where we can put the power supply. And you can see here, there are four rubber feet that way to keep the noise level and vibration down in the case. All right, if you can still see me back here, these are all the parts that we're going to be putting into the system. We're going to be utilizing the Aorus Z690 Elite AX DDR4 motherboard with the Intel Core i9-12900K processor cooled by the Arctic Freezer 2240 ARGB liquid cooling system. Providing graphics for this bad boy is going to be the EVGA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti FTW3 graphics card along with 32 gigs of Thermaltake Tough RAM 4000 megahertz RGB RAM, Samsung 980 Pro M.2 SSD, along with a WD Blue 500 gig regular SSD, and powering this entire system will be the EVGA 1000 GT 1000 watt power supply. Anyway, let's get started.
So actually, I can't use it on the top. I'm gonna have to put it at the front. So one second. So this is the part I was talking about. Just give me a minute, I'll catch up in the video. So I'm gonna have to take the front fans off. It's not a big deal. So what I'm gonna need to do is just come around the inside and unscrew them up here. So now what I'm gonna have to go ahead and do is put these fans on this side, blowing air through here, instead of the way it is now that air is blowing through here. And because of the tubes, it's gonna be intake. So one sec while I reverse it. Looks like this is gonna be a tight fit right over here. And now since we needed to remove these fans, I'm gonna go ahead and put them up here, sucking hot air out. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, since we're gonna put these two fans here, exhausting air, I'm gonna connect the cables to both fans together, starting with power. And that's gonna go up here into CPU optional. And then right along with that, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the ARGB connection from here Actually, let's do from here to here. These ARGB connections are the worst. And then into that ARGB header. Okay, so now that that's connected, we'll go ahead and connect the fan up here. Then just using an extension.
So unfortunately, I lost a lot of my audio on the video that I already had prepared and I can't go back on that. But regardless, testing with the radiator up in the front with an extremely hot video card, it was horrendous well past 81 degrees within five minutes of testing. I turned it off. I was going to give this machine a horrible review, this case, I should say, a horrible review. But then I remembered the extended radiator bracket. Oh my God. It's a game changer. So along the top, I went ahead and installed that extended radiator support bracket. And then you can see I have the system laid out like I do now. And now let me run you through some of the tests. So I do have to mention, this is not my typical video on building a machine where I take it nice and slow, showing you each and every step on how to build a machine. This is kind of in fast forward since I am reviewing the case. So in that, I do skip the BIOS flash and the Windows install. Windows 11, I did get from softwarekeep.com. If you'd like to see how I went about buying it and all that good stuff, you can click on the video up above or in the description down below. Anyway, let's keep going. So first off, with the system idle for a little while, we can see we're at around, you can see that it keeps going to un, so it's under 30 dB. This is idle. I'm about a foot away from the computer, right next to the video card. Between 33 and 35 dB. There is no side panel on here right now. On the rear of the computer, next to the fan. This is blowing on the fan, many times hitting under 30 dB, as this can only go as low as 30 dB below that. You'll see the un on the video card. between 31 and 33 dB. So at idle, this machine is incredibly quiet. Again, this is with the side panel off. So now with the side panel on, the fans have to work a little bit harder because they're pressurized, but you can see Many times it'll fall below 30 dB, so it is still incredibly quiet. Now let's see what it does when it's doing t some testing. So after stressing the system 100% on the CPU with Ida64 for 32 minutes, we can see around the hottest temperature the CPU got was 80 degrees. It might have hit 81, maybe 83, but we're using a 240 millimeter radiator with a Core i9-12900K processor. Mind you, it's stock, but the processor alone is a super hot processor. So I think the unit is doing amazing. Again, we've been stressing now for 33 minutes and the hottest it's gotten is 83 we just see it right now on the screen so cool air coming in hot air coming out the temperature as I mentioned before is 66 degrees Fahrenheit which is 18.8 degrees Celsius in this room right now so along the front of the case you can see 21.3 I'm just trying to get different readings 22 you can see with the laser where it's going. So it's about 22 degrees, 24 degrees air coming in. So nice and cool air. And then being exhausted from the rear, let's say from the GPU, we're getting about 26 degrees, just moving around, trying to get a hot point, 27 degrees. All great temperatures, 28 degrees. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. Now coming from the rear fan, we're getting about 26 degrees, 27, 29. And mind you, it might be hitting some heat sinks on the motherboard. But just to give you an idea, pretty good temperatures in Celsius. Now up at the top, we can see about 36 degrees. Actually, let me go ahead and remove this. Now... I left this on because it comes as part of the case, but the filter at the top really does nothing since air is exhausting. You want more air to come out. Because we've done this, the temperature is going to drop a little tiny bit, but not by much. Maybe one or two or three degrees, but 
shooting the radiator from here we can see 35 degrees now hitting the heat sink we'll get 39 but the radiator will stay relatively cool even though again 35 degrees we are cooling a Core i9 12900K so it's done a great job for a 240 millimeter and such a hot processor but this would be one of the hottest because again it's cooling the CPU itself and we're running it at a hundred percent so we're about a foot away and we're between 30 and 34 dB sorry 33 and 37 dB now coming at the rear of the system behind, directly behind the rear exhaust getting between 41 and 44 dB. Now all the fans in the system are controlled in the BIOS through PWM. And at the very top of the system, directly above the radiator, between 46 and 49.5 dB, I think it said, removing the filter looks like it went down 1 dB but it's still relatively quiet the 240 is being put to great use here now let's test the GPU alright so we are testing with Time Spy Extreme, and you can see with the EVGA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti FTW3, we're going between 79 and 78 degrees. We've been testing now for about 33 minutes, and the CPU between 44 and 46 degrees. CPU is not used very much here, but before when I had the liquid cooling unit the radiator up at the front the card quickly surpassed 81 degrees within five minutes so i took that out and quickly changed up here all right so now heat again 78 79 degrees coming up at the front again we're at 24 degrees celsius 23 degrees 22 degrees 26 so just showing you the front of the case how cool it is now at the rear 40 degrees air coming out 42 degrees now coming to the video card 50 degrees 48 degrees and you got to stay close to the video card or close to whatever you're measuring the closer you get the more accurate it is so it's kind of hard for me to bring it closer to the camera but you can see that there so about 50 degrees the air coming out and about 22 to 26 degrees the air coming in again I keep my house at 66 degrees Fahrenheit 18.8 .8 degrees Celsius if you have cool ambient air coming in to your PC that'll be cooler temperatures inside of your PC now coming back to the rear of the PC, we're between 50 and 53 dB. I'm right behind this fan, so I'm getting a lot of the noise from the fan hitting this up here. Now the video card. That's a tiny bit louder. That is putting out the most work though. So the Fractal Design Air RGB Magenta Core Pop Case. It's a lot of words in there. Is a nice case. It has a lot of potential and it does have a few issues. So the potential in the case is the fact that you can fit a full size card like the EVGA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti FTW3, which itself is about a 12 inch card. Now between the card and the front of the case, you have five inches of space. You can fit so much more. So either you can fit much more or you can add some 
more fans push pull if you had a radiator or you can even add more fans kind of rating your fans in the front of the case to get additional cooling now the downfall is that radiator up in the front it's going to kill air coming in the case when you have a hot video card like this or a 3090 or a 6900 xt 6950 xt you need all the air you can get having a radiator up in the front might hurt you now the thing is you can only fit up to a 280 millimeter radiator up at the front up at the very top you can only fit up to a 240 millimeter radiator so if you have for example a 12900k processor don't plan on overclocking at least not with the arctic 240 argb freezer 2 if there's something much better maybe custom liquid cooled maybe now maybe a 12700k processor you'd be able to do some overclocking and have some room with this liquid cooling unit but again you are limited to 240 millimeters in this case it's a beautiful case the coloring is amazing i think at least rather than just having plain white or plain black you have a few different color choices and i think that's pretty nice just looking at this opening it coming out of the box and everyone that's seen this case has thought it's awesome Another downfall is the fact that it doesn't bring a USB type C connection up at the top. The connection is there, physically there, but there is no module coming from that adapter to the USB type C connection on the motherboard if your motherboard supports it. Now saying that, not every single motherboard supports USB type C or has a header for it. So people that don't have it, this is the perfect case for you. People that do have it, it still might be the perfect case for you. You may not have any USB type C devices. And if you wanted to, you can always buy the module on fractaldesign.com. I like that you're not really given options to have any SSDs anywhere on the inside of the case. I prefer it that way. Mind you, you can take the panel that was down here that you can put two SSDs or two 2.5 inch drives, be at the top or the bottom one, and maybe clip it up here but it would still be on the back i like that they want to keep it nice and clean so that it doesn't look like there's too many devices in there which could also potentially block some airflow i like the clear unobstructed path that it has right up here now the other issue with the radiator is because of the tubes where it is right over here, it hits over here the PCIe connection. So when you put the glass side panel on, it pushes it in, which pushes the card down a little bit. You might need an anti-sag bracket or something along those lines right over here. Or, you know, you could move the tubes off to the right a little bit or maybe left or, you know, but just something you should be aware about. Now up at the front, you can switch out the two 120s that it comes with, with two 140s to have additional cooling, be it RGB or non-RGB, totally up to you. The rear, you can only go 120, and if you don't like the RGB, you can either turn it off or switch to a different fan. Now up at the top, you can put 120s or 140s. You can put up to two of them up there. As I showed you, the radiator won't take up the full top of the case. You have a little space right there where you can fit two fans. If they would allow more, you might be able to fit a third fan over there, but they kind of blocked you off right over here. There is no filter along the front of the case, aside from the front panel itself. So that does allow more cool air to come in, but that also will allow for more dust to come in which to me is not a big deal. You can always open up your case and blow it out or you know clean it however you'd prefer, but that's just one thing to note. I love the fact that it has a little tray down there for storage, thumb drives, screws, whatever you wanna put in there, you can. I think that's a good idea. And then also, if you have optical drives, you can fit them in there as well. The case only supports up to an ATX motherboard. So if you have an ATX board, you're out of luck on this one. But Fractal today also released a few other cases that will support ATX. So when I first started testing this machine, it was gonna fail. It was horrible, I hated it. I wanted to throw it out the window because of the radiator. Somebody at Fractal designed the case, beautiful, ah, this is gonna be the best case ever. And then they tested it and found that. The fact that they tested it though and found it before we got to see that and created the extended radiator bracket, that speaks tons. Most other case manufacturers probably wouldn't have even bothered to test it. Oh yeah, it fits perfectly fine. Meh, 
clearance, who cares, right? But Fractal went ahead, designed it. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Tested, oh my God, we can't fit a radiator. And then created that extended bracket, which alone saved the review for me. I'm sure it's going to save the review for so many other people as well. The way that that little bracket just pushes everything off to the side. Now, mind you, that probably could have been put up here as well, rather than having to put that bracket, but whatever, they made it. They designed it to work and it sure did. And even though the memory is high, the radiator fit perfectly fine. So that was an amazing feat to me. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about the entire video and what you think about the case itself. I think there are so many good points to this case. The price between 70 and $90 I think is amazing. Downfall, yeah, it doesn't have a USB type C connection, but for the price for what you're saving, you can either buy one or maybe connect it on the back of your motherboard if it does support it, but I think it's still pretty good. It could use two additional USB 2.0 and or USB 3.0 ports for a total of four ports plus the type C, but for set between 70 and $90, it's a great case and they're trying to save you some money there. Anyway, this is Iggy with This Bites For You doing a complete review of the Fractal Design Air RGB Magenta Core Pop Case. See you guys.